by the grace of Christ, my brethren, let us read now from, uh, from the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, the second one, 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 30. Second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 30. If I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas the king was guarding the city of the Damascenes with a garrison desiring to arrest me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might Depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient to you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And let us also read by the grace of Christ from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 27. Philippians 1, 27. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I, co whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel and not in any way terrified by your adversaries which is to them a proof of perdition but to you of salvation and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. Amen. The Apostle Paul is a man who is a persecutor of the church. He was wise according to the world, a theologian with the more, most true theology of that time, the law of Moses. This was a man who was faithful to God. But he was, he was perishing due to lack of knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Lord. He was lost because he did not know, even though he believed in God, and he was more godly than all his contemporaries. He was sincere. He feared God. He loved God. And because of that, he became a persecutor of the church because he believed that the heresy of the Nazarenes, as it was called back then, 
was corrupting the true doctrine of the true God. But God is good and he will visit him. And he will visit him not because he prepared the way of the Lord, but he will visit him because God is above the iniquities of men when he sees sincerity in the hearts of men and fear of God. And so as he was on the way to Damascus, being sent with authority to make the people of God suffer, to afflict the church of God, suddenly light that shines brighter than the sun shined all around him. He was blinded and he fell down in complete weakness. And there he heard the voice of the Lord. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. And this beast that had risen up against the Christians with fear of God cried out who are you Lord and with great amazement he heard it is I Jesus who is risen the one that you are persecuting and since then everything changed in his life why because he accepted Jesus Christ that he is risen when man accepts, when man believes that Jesus Christ is truly risen, that is, that he died for our sins and he was risen for our justification, well, from there on, everything changes. God comes, he regenerates man. But this is the beginning. Now there will also be the good continuity. As we said, he was blind, and for three days he fasted and he prayed. And the Lord revealed himself to him and said, A servant of mine, Ananias, will come and he will tell you what you must do. Ananias was a disciple of Christ. And Christ visited him also. Because the good news are not brought by men. They are brought by those who have the good tidings. And the good tidings are and the, the children of God, the disciples of God, have this. Go to this house, there you will find Saul, to pray and to fast, be, fa praying and fasting, because I visited him three days ago. And Ananias, with the human logic and wisdom, said, This man is a great persecutor. He's an enemy. I'm in danger of going there. And the Lord told him, Fear not. When Christ tells us, Christ tells us today, Fear not. And when Christ tells us, fear not, he doesn't mock us. He just informs us that he has prepared everything. Everything is ready. Just go. Don't be afraid. Everything is ready. So he went. He found him there on his knees, humble, blind. And the Lord told him, and as the Lord told him, he laid his hands on him and prayed, not without the agreeing will of Saul. Then Saul received his sight, he was born again, and Christ baptized him in the Holy Spirit. And now with his wisdom, he goes forward to preach in Damascus. But there, what happened was the most humbling event of his life. While he was preaching, people who came from King Aretas, they were guarding the city of Damascus and they wanted to arrest him and, die and kill him. And the disciples of Christ dropped him out of the window in a basket. And by everyone, but even by the apostle of the nations later on, was esteemed as the most humbling event of his life. Complete humility. It wasn't enough to be humbled by the bright light, but now he had to humble himself in obedience. Did you not obey? You will obey through humility. Did you not do what I told you? Leave. You will obey by being humbled. But the time of his humility has ended. 
And being led by the Lord, he went to Arabia. He sat there for three years. God taught him face to face the gospel of God so that he may have the boldness to declare that the gospel that I preach to you is not of man, but the Lord revealed it to me. And then again, with his own logic, he returned to Jerusalem with the confidence, the human confidence, that now that all these people know who I was, I will preach and everyone will believe. And the Lord tells him, get out of here quickly because your t life is in danger. And now listen. He didn't need a basket again. He left this time because when we do not listen, God brings a basket. He didn't need a basket again this time. He went to his city of Tarsus and there he waited for another four years. And Christ taught him there to be patient for the fullness of time to come. And suddenly Barnabas comes from Antioch and he tells him, come. And now the Lord tells him, go and fear not, I have prepared everything for you. I repeat now, the Lord is telling us, fear not, believe only. He has prepared all things. The question is, do you believe? Hallelujah. Paul believed it. He went to Antioch. For a whole year, he served with other people in the completely new church that God had created with Barnabas. And then suddenly, on the year, the Holy Spirit says, Separate unto me Barnabas and Paul for the work which I have prepared for them. And so without fear this time, they leave for the unknown. Only, their only hope was that God was with them, that God sent them. And this hope, I repeat, is safe and secure and almighty. God is with you. God will be with them, and he was with them. Now, the Apostle Paul is in Philippi. A few years earlier, he had gone to Corinth. A few years earlier than Corinth, he had gone to Philippi. There the Lord used him in his second apostolic journey in Greece. Churches were established, and as he went on, he went again through Philippi, and he sent a beautiful message to the Corinthians with many secrets of God. The first secret, which Paul must learn, and he's learned well, in a painful way, is that he must boast in his weaknesses. He must not believe the weaknesses, the sorrows, the hardship, the suffering, to not believe them as a problem which needs healing, but rather to believe them as birth pangs of a, pain, of a pregnant woman that will have a good result, which is the birth of Christ, the birth of the children of God, the adoption in heaven. It is not the weakness Weakness is not an illness that needs correction. Weakness is the condition of blessing. In the church of the latter days, the Lord speaking to them says, because you have small strength, you don't have power of faith, you don't have power of the Holy Spirit, you've grown cold and tired, no, no cold, you're tired, you're afraid, you're sad, you've lost your joy, you lost your hope. Does this remind you of anything? Huh. Because you have such, such small strength. What I care about is not your strength, but how you will manage your weakness. How you will behave in your weakness. Will you behave with agony, with indignation, with fear, and you'll run around with human attempts to try to find a solution to all these problems? Or will you prepare the way of the Lord by keeping His word and not denying His name? 
What is your relationship with the Word of God? Is it a book that is sitting there? Or is it the power of God that will save you? Because you believe it. What is your opinion of the Word of God? Is it something extremely, extremely important? Or is it the power of God that will save you? And what is the person, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Son of the living God? Is he the Lord of lords and the King of kings? Is he the eternal God that you are inviting and he will definitely come like a good shepherd that he is to shepherd you, to feed you, and to give you rest as long as you testify and admit to his will, to his name? confess his name how do you behave how do you manage your weakness your small strength if you manage it truly with hope in the word of God and trusting in the name of Christ then he has given before you an open door says Christ he will give you a new door that is open, a door of blessing that nobody will be able to shut. And only you will be able to come in and go out. Do you believe this thing? Hallelujah. It is, the Word of God is a comforting Word of God. It is a true Word of God. It's not fairy tales. It's not imaginations. It is the absolute and supreme truth, this Word of God. <laughs> Only beware. Be careful what your opinion is about the Word of God. Truly believe. Let us all believe that it is the power of God that will save us. There is no salvation, my dear brethren, out of the Word of God. And not only salvation, but also there is no blessing out of the Word of God. Out of the testimony of Jesus Christ that He is the Lord and your God, that He is your friend, that He is your Savior before God. Yes, Christ is my friend. Christ is my Savior and before men. I trust Him. That is where I lean and lay my life. That is where I dedicate my life. And I know that He will come. And I know that He will come as a good shepherd. And He will embrace me. He will take care of me, of my children, of my job, of my life. He will take care of everything. Fear not, believe only, all things are ready. Everything is ready. And the Apostle Paul knows this. For that reason he says, it is not in my best interest to boast. I will boast in my infirmities, yes, in my humblings, yes, in my illnesses, yes, in my weakness, yes. I'll boast. But it's not in my interest to boast in my strength. Because I will come to revelations of the Lord. But it is necessary now for me to do so. <coughs> for you says the Apostle Paul, for us, so that you may learn the things that our Lord taught me, our guide and our professor taught, taught me. I know a man in Christ Jesus who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And he makes a great distinction in his logic and their thoughts. There is the outward man that is cor corroding and fading. And there's the inner man who is renewed every day. So that this temporary light sorrow is producing in us an exceedingly greatly weight of glory. That is why it is in my interest to boast in my sorrows. Because the temporary light affliction 
is working greatly and exceedingly, a exceedingly great weight of glory when? When we do not look to the things that can be seen, but to the things that cannot be seen, which are eternal. When we do not use human wisdom, but we use the wisdom of God, which is eternal. So I know a person and he separates the outer man who fades from the inner man who is renewed, which the Lord came and took and brought him up to the third heaven, to the paradise of God. That is where he took me. I don't know if I went in my body without my body. I can't understand. And there I heard words that cannot be uttered, but I understood them. But it's not permitted for me to tell you these things. For this man, therefore, not for me. And who are you? I am the person who gets sick. That is what I boast in. But for this man here, who is renewed every day by the Holy Spirit according to the image of Christ, which is the image of the invisible God, for this man, I will boast and I will not lie because I will speak the truth. But I reserve myself because I'm afraid that some of you will think of me to be something more than what I truly am and I'm truly nothing. But so that I may not be puffed up because of the revelations that God gives me, God has given me something to hold me humble. He has given me a thorn in my flesh. Indeed, the devil uses, the devil of Satan buffets me. God permits the devil of Satan to strike me. But this is a blessing because I went to the Lord and I said, free me, Lord, from this. And the Lord told him, this is my grace, and my grace is sufficient unto you. Grace of God is your affliction, is your sorrow, is your agony, is your fear. The grace of God. But why? Because when you suffer, you lose all your power. You are no longer the mighty person that you were. When you're afraid, you stop being the strong one that you were. When you worry, you stop being the, the one who, who, is exalt who is greater, who is unpro unprotect uh, unapproachable. And you become something that God wants, which is a trembling lamb of God that is weak. But then, Then the Lord tell me, told me, My strength in your weakness is made perfect. And you must choose, Paul. Do you want your weakness with my strength? Or do you want your strength with my weakness? And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is a choice that God gives us. You will choose. Do you choose your weakness so that the power of God may be made perfect in you? Or do you choose to correct your weakness, your passions, your sorrows, your sufferings with your own logic that you may even succeed, but you will lose the power of God? It is a choice. Do you devote yourself to God? Do you repent for the days of your power and the works of the days of your, of your power by returning to the Lord and preparing God for the way of the Lord and keeping the word of God and not denying His name, the name of Christ? so that the power of God may come. What do you want? 
It's as if God is asking us, what do you want, my son? Do you want everything to go well in your life? And I to be this small? Or do you want to be in weakness and I to be almighty in your life? If you want this, then boast in your weaknesses. Whoever wants power of God, this is a spiritual law. He must boast in his weaknesses and not hide them and not hope in his strength, but he must boast in the fact that he cannot. Whoever wants power from the word of God in his life, he must boast in his weaknesses. He must rejoice. And that is why the Apostle Paul, when he realized the logic of God, he said, Oh, so with great joy I will boast now more in my weaknesses so that the power of God may dwell in me. In other words, can you glorify God for your afflictions? Can you thank Him and rejoice? by keeping the Word of God at the same time and not denying the name of Christ and preparing the coming of the Lord into your life when He will come as a Good Shepherd to take care of you, you and everything. Do you accept? Do you believe? Do you seek such a Christ who wants you weak so that He may be strong in your life? Do you want one such God that wants you rather to be weak and more weak so that he may be mighty? Or do you want a God that will make you almighty on this earth, but you will see no, none of the powers of the ages to come? What do you want? And everything depends on what you ask for. And you ask what you want for. And today you will either ask for healing, even though it's not an illness from the birth pangs of the pregnant woman, or you will ask for power in the birth pangs of a pregnant woman for the glory of God, knowing that God will give you these things. If you do not deny His name and His word, He will give you an open door. Why will He give you an open door? because there is the synagogue of Satan next door and he doesn't want them to go to hell. He wants to bring them here. He wants them to worship the Lord before your feet and to acknowledge that I have loved you because whomever the Lord loves, he does what? Hmm. He trains him. And what does he do to the son that he receives? Does he exalt him? He scourges him. What do we want, my dear brethren? What we want to seek is a personal choice. I will make it better for you as I, be I believe that God made it for me. What do you want? But look at what a good God we have. What do you want? Do you want an open door that nobody can shut? Or do you want a closed door that nobody can open? What do you want? An open door, Lord. Then your, your strength will be small. Amen, Lord. And you will keep my word. Help me, Lord, do this. And you will not deny my name. By your grace, Lord Jesus. It is so simple. The choice is very easy. But the logic of man makes it very difficult. But now, what will be spend a whole life in suffering and agony and fears and the birth pangs of... of the birth pangs... Shouldn't I go next there where there is a great door and a road that is easy? But what follows is hell. God wants you in the narrow gate and the difficult path because that leads into eternal life. My dear brethren, it is written and the Bible cannot be broken. Whatever man sows, that is what he leaves. Le what he reaps. If you sow into your flesh, into
to your opinion, your thoughts, your attempts, your own struggle, your desires, your successes, then you will reap corruption. If you sow in the spirit of Christ, who did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, he denied himself, how? By taking the form of a bondservant, and when he took the form of a bondservant, he became like men. And being in the appearance as a man, again he humbled himself, becoming obedient to his father to the point of death, death even of the cross. And that is why the father lifted him up. What path do you follow? The broad gate and the easy way? What road do you want? Or the narrow gate and the difficult path? It is a choice. It is a personal choice. If you want the power of God, rejoice and boast. Don't be afraid, don't be sorrowful, don't worry, don't, ag don't feel agony, but be glad and rejoice in your sorrows and your agony so that the power of God may come into your life. Don't become indignant, don't get angry, don't be enraged, but give glory to God because there are people who afflicted you and they afflict you, that there are situations that bring you into a difficult position, that there are people who accuse you. Give glory to God. Don't be sad. Don't, don't be grieved. Don't think. Don't become indignant. But give glory to God so that the Lord may give you an open gate that nobody will be able to shut because those of the synagogue of Satan must come to worship the Lord before your feet and then they will know that God loves you even if you are suffering. Only Live worthily of the gospel of God in the church of Christ. Because in order for the word of God to be sealed in the life of every one of us, there must be holy conduct of a chosen people with a choice that God made, a nation, they're special. A nation means one tongue. The main characteristic of one nation is this language, the language of the Word of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit. For that reason, conduct yourself worthy of the gospel of Christ as individuals, as individuals in your families, in the church, in your work, and your daily life worthy of the gospel of Christ, that you may stand with your brethren in one spirit and strive with them as one soul and not be afraid of the gospels, of the enemies of the gospel. Because to them, their, 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 their enmity is proof of perdition, but to you, it is a proof of salvation from God and the great secret of Paul. For to you it has been granted not only to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for his sake. And here, my dear brothers and sisters, this is a great secret. Suffer for Christ, for his sake not suffer because of your sins, because of your mistakes, because of your unbelief. Do you remember how we started? Comfort, comfort my people, for the time of humility has ended. 
iniquity has been forgiven. Until then they suffered because of their iniquities. He doesn't talk about this way of suffering because of your sin. Quickly repent, return, prepare for Christ so that it may come to an end. So the time of humility may end. Unless you repent and you justify yourself, the time of your humility will not end. If you do not return to the Lord humbled and say, I have made a mistake and mistakes, the time of suffering will not end and you will suffer without any hope. Neither of healing nor of the glory of God. So it has been granted you on behalf of Christ. It's a gift for you to suffer, but always for Christ. And here, my dear brethren, we come to the practical life of the gospel because the gospel isn't a theory. Do you want your affliction to end in your house, under, suffering under your wife, your children, your, your job, which comes because of your iniquity? Well, it's easy. It is easy. Humble yourself before God. If you cannot humble, bef humble yourself before man, it's okay in the beginning. But humble yourself before God first. Say, if I've made a mistake, Lord, if I calculated things wrongly, if I thought things wrongly, if I made a mistake and I committed iniquity and then ask you and I then ask, walk the way that I wanted, that you wanted, please forgive me because I want the time of my humility to end. I want it to end. I repent. And my dear brethren, for us to humble ourselves before God is not only pleasing to Him, but it is also easy and beneficial. It's not important for you to say, Lord, Lord, I made a mistake. Or tell Him, Lord, if I made a mistake, please forgive me. Whatever you want, just show your humility and your approach. Your seeking of His face. Reveal it to God. God is a good God. He will finish the road, the day, time of your humility. He will forgive your iniquity. Don't let Him burden you and not be corrected and you to not have hope of correction, hope of blessing. You to know that nothing is going to change unless you change first. And if you change, then everything will change. Everything will change. Why should God humble you and you suffer and we to not humble ourselves first and be blessed? May God keep us, my dear brethren, and may God give us a spirit of a humble person and a contrite heart that we may keep his word and never deny his name, that we may prepare the way of the Lord. So. It was given for you to suffer, but for Christ, because of Christ. Suffer because you keep the Word of God. Yes, if you keep the Word of God, you will suffer. You testify the name of Christ. Yes, it is not easy for you to hold the Word of God. You need sacrifice. You need a good race. You need to be managed by the Holy Spirit. You need humility. It is not easy for you to keep the Word of God. And it is even more difficult for you to always testify the name of Christ. But, by the grace of Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, all things are possible and easy as long as we believe in the Word of God and we know that the Word of God is the power of God that will save me. I believe in your Word, Lord, and I want to do your Word. Help me, please. 
I believe in Christ, O oh Father, and I want Him to be my defender, my redeemer, and my savior. Help me, Lord. It's so easy. So it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. There is no man that because of Christ he does not suffer. You will not be an exception. Unless you suffer, then there's no grace of Christ. There's no exception in this. Whoever wants to live godly, he will be persecuted. They will accuse you. They'll call you fa fanatic, strict, heretic. They'll call you whatever they want. doesn't matter. What matters is for Christ to be with you. What accus the accusations that they brought up against Paul back then, all the things that they said about him. But what matters is not what people say, but what Christ says about you. And this is revealed by the activities of Christ in your life. It becomes made known, and we all know that Christ loves you because you su suffer for the name of Christ. And the Apostle Paul, as he finishes here, he says, And also having this struggle, which you saw in me, and now you hear. You hear me living as he is in prison in Rome when he writes this letter to the Philippians. May God help us, my dear brothers and sisters, that we may have the Spirit of Christ, that we may sow in the Spirit of Christ, so we may reap everlasting life for us, for our family, and for all those that we are praying for. Amen.